So ladies and gentlemen, Keith and I connected online. And one of the things I've always thought as we grow out this group, Eric and I have talked, obviously we've got a, a mix of people as we continue to add those of us that are in the business, those of us that use the packaging, those of us that influence the packaging. But Keith is in the machinery side of things, which I've always thought is a perfect fit for what we're trying at least. It doesn't do us any good to not be able to have somebody or at least be able to have a conversation about equipment. Now, what also I'm intrigued with is Keith is in the Midwest, specialized a lot in the automation type of hands-on design of that, what we call the final mile of assembly. For example, like we were talking yesterday, you have a, whether it's a box carton or whatever it may be, and then you want to apply Velcro to this carton, but that Velcro is right now being applied by manual labor. And you guys are able to take it that final mile or whatever. So why don't you give us a little background about what you guys do? I promised Keith that I wouldn't ask for his views on world peace or Trump or anything <laughs> like that. We're just going to let him do his thing. Keith, take it away. Thank you. My name is Keith Panucci, and I'm based out of uh, Green Bay, Wisconsin. And uh, I've been in the automation business for 35 years. I went to school at University of Wisconsin-Madison. My background is also electrical engineering. I spent a lot of time selling and designing automation in Europe and the Far East, uh, all over South America, and of course, all over uh, North America. And it really is truly custom automation. We're here at Lindquist Machine in Green Bay. I'll tell you a little bit about Lindquist. We've been here for 80 years in uh, Green Bay, Wisconsin. And we started that the Lindquist brothers came over from Germany. One was a tool and die expert and one was a machine designer. And they landed in New York and say, hey, all those paper mills, they need some machines. So they landed in Green Bay. And still, of course, paper is still a big area for us. We still do a lot of custom stuff in the paper industry, but Wisconsin and the Midwest in general is, is still a big converting hub. We handle and package a lot of paper, a lot of plastics, a lot of non-wovens, and we're always dealing with some type of packaging. That's what caught my eye, that I deal with packaging engineers every week. So I've got this box, I've got this plastic container, I've got this bottle, I've got this, and I need to put all this stuff into this box or bottle, <laughs> and I need to then put it in a brown carton. I need to palletize it robotically, et cetera, and put it on an AMR and automatically send it out to the warehouse. That's the kind of discussions mm -hmm. that we get into here at Lindquist and design the equipment around that specialized packaging. We work with 17 different industries and some of the key industries for us is pharmaceutical. So we do a lot of packaging in the pharmaceutical area. And we do a lot in the confectionery area. Yeah, confectionery yeah. is big for us. We handle a lot of sticky stuff. We work with the Ferrara candies of the world, Ferraro now, Mars candy, and a lot of the middle, medium-sized candy confectionaries throughout North America. So we're always putting that candy in some type of bag or some type of bottle. We work in that area and then also on, again, different types of packaging every day. I was telling David I was in... Mexico um, a couple of weeks ago with Velcro Corporation and they have 1500 people at their their factory in Mexico all taking 1500 part numbers and taking all these cartons all these plastic containers and manually putting Velcro in these containers pieces that would go into Walmart or Costco or right. whatever over a thousand part numbers and they just can't sustain the amount of people they have there and right. really control all of that, those part numbers where we can do that a lot with, as you mentioned, AI and keeping track of a lot of different things through our factory automation. But those are the kind of things that Lindquist does. We're approximately about a $50 million a year a custom automation company about 150 employees. And our facility here in Green Bay is uh, approximately 170,000 square feet. So it's large because we do some yeah. small machines and some very long converting lines. So we're still doing converting lines that are making packaging. Some of our converting lines can be 300 feet long. 
So we're taking things. And we have one of the biggest box manufacturers in the country, Green Bay Packaging. We do a lot of custom equipment for them. And they have a facility about six blocks away from us here that's fully automated, making custom packaging type of things. So that at a high level is what Lindquist uh, gets into that. It's really that end process of once we have this packaging, how can we help them handle the packaging? How can we help them fill this packaging with a product or liquid? And then once it's filled or packaged, how do we automatically get it into a brown carton, package it automatically, and then with robotics, which we do a lot of robotics, is take that brown carton and palletize it, right? So we're definitely at the back end of your process. Let me dig in a little bit further. So two things. One of the things Eric and I always try when we approach a new client is really talk to them initially, what's the pain point? What pain point are we solving? So I'm wondering if in your world on the machine side of things, when you're working with a new or whatever customer, are they coming to you saying it's a new product, we've got to take it from packaging in something rigid and move it into something flexible we have nothing, Keith. We got to start from start to finish, meaning you've got this square footage and fill this room and make this happen. Or are they coming to you saying, look, we've got this machine right now that's filling rigid bottles. We need to retrofit that into something that where's your sweet spot? It's really at a high level. I can answer that as both areas. Still a majority is definitely, I've got this box and I need to completely automate this. It comes flat, of course, and this is a potential customer. And then I got to right. take this and case pack it and then finalize it. That's where I start from a clean sheet of paper. Sometimes though, there are retrofits. We do a lot of retrofits that might be some old machine they have, and we'll see if we can retrofit it and change it and make changes in that regard. So we definitely do both. The automation world where you're at is fascinating because I did walking through the Hoover company vacuum cleaners where they're manually assembling their vacuum cleaners. That's gotta be interesting in your world because you guys aren't necessarily, not a pack expo, but one of those machine expos, no. whatever it is, that are $15 million pieces of equipment that is a five year yeah. build out. Are you dealing in that five-year build-out or are you talking about something that is, hey, I can do this in eight weeks or six weeks or whatever? Take us through what that looks like. Yeah, we'll get involved with small projects, right? That, hey, we need something in eight weeks to fixture this product. So we have fixture tool and die experts here that we can make those fixtures up Perfect. to more, we'll call medium size production lines where like I said, going back to this box, this box right. will probably be about a $600,000 packaging line. So it. it can go from very small to about $2 million is our sweet okay. spot. And we'll be able to basically build that line, do FAT and install it in under a year. I'm just asking this out of curiosity. Once the machine's in place, is there a year warranty? Is there a, a forever warranty? How does that work from a from machine standpoint? Tell us a little bit more about how people can learn about that. Yeah, once we get into the design phase, we of course work with the customer from napkin basically to fully design and we use uh, 3D modeling software. Right. SolidWorks is who we use. And then we use simulation software along with that. So we can simulate the whole production line as we're designing it. So we can ensure that we're meeting rates and all that. That's our design process. Mm -hmm. Once the customer signs off, we're building and then we get to FAT, so they come to our facility or during COVID, we built tons of face mask machines and PE type of equipment, uh, but we use a lot of webcams because we have customers worldwide. Oh yeah, that's interesting. So real time, you can be able to monitor those machines. Yep, so real time, we'll have cameras out there so customers in South America or Europe or Asia can see us building the machine at any time, see us go through testing. When we have concerns or questions, they can see it real time and they can help us with uh, some of the questions we have. So that's pre-FAT, then we get to FAT, which again could be video, and they did everything via webcam. Even though they're wow. to drive away, they did everything webcam. But we have a lot of our customers that will come here and then go through the runoff. So every machine is runoff at real time, running the exact packaging, 
doing what the quotation is agreed upon, packaging yep. rates and making enough products so everybody's feeling comfortable with that. And then once yep. they feel comfortable, then we pick it up and then we'll help them install it and help train their operators on how to run the machine. And then usually our warranty is one year from date of installation. I hope you like this content. If you want more of it, I put together a specialized packaging alliance, a group of packaging professionals that are in different facets of this industry. We have webinars, we have meetings. The idea is to share information about this great industry of packaging, whether that be uh, the sales side of things to the marketing, um, to the end users. My point with this is I'd love to have you join us the Specialized Packaging Alliance. Check out the link below to learn more. Thanks. It's interesting. How do people find you? Are you going to different trade shows? Are you marketing online? How do you get that one-on-one -on -one with somebody? Because right. you guys are really filling that void. You're eliminating that pain point for somebody, but if they don't know about it, you, got to find a way to bridge that gap. Exactly. I mean, the one good thing is that Lindquist has been around for 80 years. I think we have an excellent reputation globally. They just pass our name along to other people. And, and that's one way that we've yeah. owned through the years is, is just yeah. the mouth, but also of course, via the internet, of course, and then shows. We do go yeah. on various types of uh, automation shows and packaging shows, etc. throughout uh, North America. Sometimes we'll go to uh, Europe and the Far East for their packaging shows, etc. And we have been so oh, yeah. incredibly busy since COVID. No need for shows. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. That's one of the reasons why Eric and I started working on this too, is the the virtual world, although the big boys are calling their people back to the office or at least part of the time back to the office and that's fine, but they're still now learning virtually and again, connecting virtually and building a relationship virtually is not unheard of anymore. And it's one of those things that we can really do a lot of that legwork ahead of time before we actually invest the time and money to go and visit the factory in Green Bay, Wisconsin. I guess our business is pretty technical. Yeah. You know, and people are always looking for different types of equipment. I think people will always talk to us. We're always interested in some type of maybe better machinery or better solution than what they have. In my years of doing this, I think people usually will see us and usually it will be an executive, oh. vice president of engineering, or even the yeah. president because of right. the cost of automation. So uh, that's a good part of my business that people usually will see us. One of the biggest battles is getting to a decision maker. Yeah. You start with really close to decision maker because you're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars. It's interesting because we do, of course, being in the Midwest, we do a lot of food and beverage. And what a big customer of ours is Kraft, Kraft Heinz yeah. Foods, Tyson Foods, the list goes on. And uh, those guys are big, right? And getting to the yeah. right people and right factories. And we just got a call out of nowhere about six years ago and one of my bigger customers now and that uh, hey i need a custom machine to package the lunchables right yeah, so here yeah. again i got this package yeah. <laughs> here's right. this plastic right. container in the sleeve okay yeah. how am i going to fill yeah. this with ham and cheese and bread yeah. Mm -hmm. And nitrogen flush it to keep out the oxygen. Since then, I've built like 22 of those machines in the last I'll six be years. damned. Ooh, you know, that's so great. Those are some very interesting things. We Real quick before we wrap it up, and I'll make sure everyone gets a copy of this. But Keith, when you've already created a machine for somebody and they come back and go, hey, give me four more. Is yep. that something that you're able to do much, fa obviously much faster, but is yep. that something that you're able to, I'm just looking for that secret sauce, if you will, that you guys are able to turn quickly and say, look, we can pump this thing out now in six weeks versus six months. Right. That's a great question because uh, another customer down in Texas, they make the burritos, small yeah. burritos that are frozen. They sell to Costco and all over North America, and they produce a million burritos a week. We help them design a new machine on how to dispense the burrito, the uh, ingredients inside the tortilla cell. So we made a prototype, it ran for about six months. So now they're ready to order. And I just received a large order last week for 20 machines. So Excuse now so we can build 20 <laughs> machines and I can build those in 16 weeks. 
Wow, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Hi, everyone. It's David Marinek. I hope you enjoyed that episode. If you want to see more, here's another video that you can check out, and I hope you enjoy it. Thanks.